People who have found an adult video of someone they know, how did you react to it? Number one. While in college, I went on a date with a future adult video star. Back then, she was studying to be a teacher. It was definitely interesting to see, especially knowing how enthusiastic she was about teaching and all that. I can't name names. I'm not even sure it would matter anyway. I doubt her stage name is her real name. And I don't recall what her stage name was. She had red hair and freckles. Not a serious pro, just had some web presence, as I recall. That's not really my thing, and I don't know anyone's names. Number two. I had a fling with an actress whose private photos got leaked online. It led to a flood of comments from people who stumbled upon them. Those who didn't know us immediately took to the internet to dissect every detail. They went from discussing how she didn't match their idea of attractiveness to outlining what they'd like to do to her. As for comments about me, they mainly revolved around how others could do things better or general insults about my appearance. Essentially, it was your standard analysis from a bunch of internet users. For those who knew her, most were tactful enough to at least pretend they hadn't rushed to check them out right away. However, there were plenty of averted eyes for a while. She received numerous supportive messages from people who had heard about it, but we were fairly certain that for many of them, looking them up was the first thing they did, followed by sending those supportive messages. She didn't handle it very well. It turns out that it is challenging to expose extremely private photos to the world, followed by people dissecting and analyzing them as if you're some sort of zoo exhibit. Comments like, she's attractive though, she should embrace it. Don't provide much comfort either. And it's astonishing how many people express that sentiment, or some variation of it. Regarding people who knew me, I received numerous messages congratulating me, which wasn't exactly appreciated. It turns out there's no way to express, hey, I checked out a bunch of pictures of you with a gorgeous woman. Good job. Without it being odd and inappropriate, particularly from supposed friends who had heard about it and simply decided to intrude on your privacy because everyone else is doing it. So, essentially, many believed that examining those photos and bringing them up to one or both of us was the right thing to do. They were all mistaken. So, if you're simply seeking stories, there's mine. However, if you actually stumbled upon a video of a friend and sought advice, mine would be to close it down and act as if you never saw it. You might consider informing them if you suspect it was shared online without their consent. If you do, it will be awkward, but they'd probably prefer to know so they can take steps to remove it. Regardless, do not disclose this to anyone else. That's true, man. Seeing your friend's full moon on the internet sure is awkward. We have a membership for those who like more naughty and interesting stories that aren't advertiser-friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing Confessions community so you can support the channel. Number 3. In one of my previous positions, there was a woman named Ellen who worked as my secretary. I'd estimate she was in her mid-twenties with an attractive girl next door appeal. She excelled at her job, maintaining a quiet and deeply religious conduct. Given my policy of keeping professional boundaries, our interactions were limited to casual greetings like good morning or discussing board meeting schedules. However, when her car broke down and I found her place was along my common route, I offered her rides to and from work. During these rides, conversation was sparse, but I began to learn a bit more about her. She seemed like a genuinely kind individual. Eventually, after about two weeks, her car was fixed, and on our final ride home, she graciously invited me in for a cup of tea to express her gratitude for the rides. I accepted the offer. Upon entering her place, a quaint house nestled in a rural area, I was struck by its pristine condition. Not a trace of dust, no dishes left in the sink, and everything was meticulously organized. Notably, a sizable portrait of Jesus hung above the dining room table, one of those images that seemingly follow your gaze whenever you move in the room. We had our tea, engaged in a pleasant conversation, and then I departed. A couple of months later, she decided to leave her position to pursue a better job opportunity elsewhere. A few months later, I found myself interviewing a photographer for a contract job. As I checked his portfolio, there it was, a whole section featuring Ellen, in various poses. These were clearly art photos, but I have to admit, she had an amazing body, really fit and toned. The man noticed my intrigue and remarked, she used to be my girlfriend about a year ago. 
She'd get bare in a flash and loved having fun, yet she was deeply religious and had this portrait of Jesus, which was the biggest turn off for me. I simply nodded and flipped to the next section without a word. Number four. I initiated a conversation with a girl on a dating website, and after some chatting, I mentioned that I admired her main picture because it appeared professionally taken. She mentioned she works as a model, and when I asked about the specific type, she hinted at a very particular kind, mentioning they're online but edited, but I'd never be able to find them. In the end, I did manage to locate pictures and videos on a specific free website that required registration to access the content. I informed her about it, and surprisingly, she was quite impressed. I didn't pursue anything further because, truthfully, I wasn't all that invested. The challenge intrigued me more than anything else. We were supposed to meet up, but she was going out of the area for a month. However, we planned to meet up when she returned. Unfortunately, I ultimately ruined my chances with her because I was really eager to meet her in person and talk about all the cool things we should do. She felt I was trying to rush things faster than she was comfortable with and eventually stopped talking to me. I guess being so nosy isn't really charming. Number five. Background. A close friend of mine dated a cruel man for about a year. She was very down when she entered the relationship, so she was vulnerable to his influence. And oh boy, did he take advantage. Among many other wrongs, including gaslighting, threats, shaming, and demands, he convinced her to allow him to film tapes of them both. After she finally ended the relationship, swiftly leaving their shared home as soon as she secured a new lease, he escalated into stalking behavior. He started sending her threatening texts, emails, and voicemails, even posted their videos online as a form of revenge. Due to her distinctive name, locating the videos was effortless. Much has transpired since then. He persistently pestered her for over a year and a half. She relocated, managed to track her down. She moved once more, filed a police report. However, the police couldn't or wouldn't take action as he hadn't physically shown up or engaged in any direct physical actions. Changed her phone number and submitted numerous takedown requests to the hosting websites. Yet it remains in the internet. Consequently, even years later, some of it continues to resurface. Honestly, every couple of months I search her name online and submit takedown requests on her behalf. She's intelligent and has an incredible work ethic. She's moved past this guy and has a bright career ahead. She doesn't deserve this. Number six, I went to high school with Lindsay Love and was actually decent friends with her and her partner. I keep in touch with a lot of old high school friends, plenty of whom I still hang out with. I'm closest to this one guy who would go do nerd stuff with me. Board game meetups, game tournaments, etc. One day when we're out, he tells me he's actually moved in with two of my old friends, L and M. How neat, I think. How are they doing? Oh, it turns out they're amateur adult stars, he tells me. I don't really know how to react. I'm friends with them on Facebook. I've seen pictures of them laughing with family and we'd talk on the bus about Pokemon. It's just hard to picture. Months later, I found one. I thought the face in the thumbnail looked familiar, the name matched, and sure enough, it was them. It was weird. I don't disapprove of their choices. Hell good for them for finding something they love and making a job out of it, but it is very weird to see kids you grew up with relatively famous for their awesome romancing. Number seven, I was working in the stockroom of a department store. There was this really attractive girl in the clothing department that we all talked about, thinking about getting her number. Being young, our dating skills weren't exactly top-notch. So when my buddy Kev asked her out, he got turned down because she wasn't single. A few weeks later, her boyfriend started working in the stockroom with me. He was a cool guy, but honestly, she was still way out of his league. One day, while browsing the internet, I stumbled upon this site, and there it was. An entire album featuring this girl posing with another girl I'd never seen before. I was extremely excited, and immediately shared this discovery with my buddy Kev. There was another set we found of her with a man, but you never see his face. It turns out it was the guy I worked with in the stockroom. I asked him about it and was pretty upset. Apparently, he sold them to the site for some extra cash and didn't want me to tell anyone about them. Number eight. I attended high school with Himimori. I stumbled upon one of her alternate social media accounts that she used, so I messaged a mutual friend of ours and she confirmed it was indeed Haim. 
Naturally, I shared this discovery with my roommates, who also went to high school with us. Gradually, the excitement subsided, and I assumed that was the end of it until about six months ago when she announced on her Facebook page that she had become an adult video starlet and was seeking someone she knew to provide security for her. She offered to cover expenses and all that. I would have readily taken up that offer, but I was in a relationship at the time. Nevertheless, she had posted a link to her videos, and I watched them. She was a really sweet girl in high school, and I actually hung out with her and her group of friends quite a bit before I moved to the States. I'm just glad she's doing well and pursuing something she likes. According to her tweet, she was nominated for an award. Never thought I'd feel proud of someone for that. Life is indeed strange. Number 9. I've been doing it for a while. Like most people, I did my best to hide it and managed to keep it under wraps for a couple of years. Slowly, though, people started finding out there are a few embarrassing stories about how people found out and their reactions. I have a cousin a couple of years older than me. One day his wife came over. She said, We bought something to watch, and you're in it. We don't mind, but if you could list down all the films you've been in so this never happens again, that would be great. Someone mailed my parents. That's how they found out. I was on Tinder for a hot minute. I frequently got the, you look familiar line. One guy even told me he had a reverse image search in my photos. Creepy, right? Once I was featured dancing out of town. It's where clubs bring in stars to perform. A cousin happened to be there for a bachelor party. During my first set, as I walked out over the music, I heard him scream my real name. There's a roll tide moment tucked in there somewhere. I bet you get tons of awkward and cringy moments with that job. Number 10. Upon entering college, one of my friends was a very cute alternative girl. I was aware that she was working in that line, primarily art shots, along with some very revealing ones, but nothing too shocking. A couple of years later, one of her classmates showed me a collection of more explicit videos from a later time in her life. Some of the content was rather intense. Knowing that the guy had a crush on her and was somewhat of a creepy stalker, I gave her a heads up. It turned out she'd removed her videos from the website she used back then, but this guy had somehow managed to find a few. He attempted to pressure her with that information, but a few friends and I made it clear to him that if he persisted, he'd have to face the authorities or take a bad fall down the stairs. She was happy that I warned her, and we became best buds afterward. We never formally dated, but we hooked up a few times over the years when we both found ourselves single and attending weddings. Interestingly, when she invited me to her wedding next spring, she joked that I'd have to bring my own date this time. If you've made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. Number 11. I'm male. During my college days, I sat near this guy who frequently sought my help. He was an attractive guy who was dating a beautiful blonde girl from our school. You can imagine my surprise when I stumbled upon a video featuring him. It was from a fairly well-known production company. It was rather awkward to watch, not just because I knew him, but also because his performance wasn't quite up to par. He eventually told me about it, and I acted clueless as if I had no idea. He also mentioned he was a junkie and then asked me for money. Then, casually, he asked if I wanted to participate in it. I declined that offer. Number 12. I found one of my friends doing stuff. He was sitting on the couch doing an interview and kept insisting he was straight, saying he didn't like guys, but he just needed the money. Then he went ahead and did it. I've been meaning to ask how much he was paid for that. Number 13. She was an ESL student from Japan. I refrained from telling anyone about it because the Japanese-Canadian language exchange community was quite close-knit, and I didn't want to embarrass her. However, someone else discovered it and spread the information to everyone. As a result, she left the country earlier than expected. I felt bad about it. She was truly kind. Was the photo pixelated? Number 14. I modeled for a softcore website, so inevitably some people I know in real life are aware of it and have checked it out. Two of them, who admitted it to me, happened to be boyfriends of close friends. They confessed to downloading the photo sets for free and viewing them with my girlfriends. I sensed they might have been laughing or making comments about me being on display. It bothered me. I felt let down that my girlfriends would do that behind my back and simultaneously puzzled as to why their boyfriends would share that with me. The only other guy I know who confessed to subscribing and using my pictures for personal time is now my current boyfriend. 
He told me about it after we started dating, though. Looks like this girl's friends are aiming for a menage a trois. Number 15. I found out a friend of a friend did one, but never watched it because I don't want it to alter how I felt about him. Also, I have no reason to watch that stuff. Seeing two men doesn't do it for me personally. I realize that although I have a few quirks, I'm a bit more traditional than I expected. And I found my boss. It was bad. Really hard to look at her the next day. Made me feel really weird. She ended up getting pregnant a few months later. Decided not to stop smoking because it would shock her system. Also, I don't work there anymore, number 16. My married friends are verified in one community. I let them know I knew by commenting on their post. They were both familiar with my account and because I used it for almost everything. The text messages I received after I commented were priceless, and a girl named Zoe from our high school posed for Burning Angel. Someone found out, bought an account, and showed everyone at a party. She wasn't there. Maybe a dozen of us were in the host's bedroom, joking around while flipping through the pictures. I played it cool in the room and laughed it off, but later that night I got my hands on the username and password. To be honest, after the party, I went home and entertained myself with her pics and vids, number 17. My ex-girlfriend and another woman I had a crush on both did some scenes for a local company. It surprised me. I saved the videos and I still have them on a hard drive somewhere. Later, my ex-girlfriend became an exotic dancer. One day she asked me if I could Photoshop her pictures for advertising and touch them up. She had a bit of cellulite in the back of her thighs and I heavily Photoshopped them to make them look really nice. I even got paid for it. Recently, I looked her up. I know her club name, and she's still using the photos I edited for her. Number 18. A girl at college changed her name and became Megan Cox. To be honest, I felt sorry for her. It seemed like she had messed up her life. I found out my older brother, older by literally 30 years, had a site with his wife, my sister-in-law, on it. He let us borrow a laptop once, and I stumbled upon the pictures. It was a general WTF, OMG reaction, but as a girl who isn't into other girls, it was just a WTF moment. How are you supposed to react seeing your sister-in-law all over the screen? I shut that thing down and didn't touch the computer until we got a replacement. At least she dodged the awkwardness of witnessing her brother's wrinkly jewels. Number 19. The first thing I did was I went by myself for hours. I was initially attracted to her, but not enough to consider dating her. She was a goth chick, always in black clothes that concealed her physique. We shared a class four days a week and got along well, but there wasn't any physical chemistry. When I stumbled upon her on this website and saw how incredible she was, I couldn't stop thinking about her. She noticed the change in my attitude. Well, really, she kept catching me staring at her, and after a couple of weeks, she became really flirty. We went out for drinks after class one day, which wasn't unusual, but this time it was just us two. After a few drinks, I confessed I'd seen her pics online and found her incredibly attractive. We flirted for a bit and then caught the metro back to her place. We had a nice fling for a few months until she got involved with someone more serious. Definitely no regrets. Number 20. It was a news scene, and in that one camera angle, all I saw was his jewels. Then the camera ran around, and I saw the guy I sat across from every day in the office. The following days, I must have acted strangely because one day he asked, Do you find me on the internet? And all I said was, yep. He laughed hard and said, well, we all do it, and I get paid to do so, so no biggie. And then he offered me a role because he was also a director for such videos. Number 21. I went to high school with Piper Fawn, or whatever spinoff that the name of a given site uses, and her FB profile pic was one of her still-clothed shots from a set, so it was an easy confirmation when I stumbled across it. It was kind of exciting to be in the know, but the novelty faded. I was friends with her brother, but never brought it up to either of them the next time they were both in town for the holidays. Next up is not really someone I know, more like a YouTuber I watched for a while. When stumbling across the video of said person, it felt like watching it for the first time all over again, like a nervous, tingly feeling. It was a positive experience. For all those asking, it was Equilibrium ASMR. Number 22. At the high school I went to, it was fairly well known that the school resource officer, basically the cop stationed in the school, had a daughter who was an adult star. She appeared in Cat House, the HBO series, and I really enjoyed watching her segments, to say the least. I met her once in person, and she was really nice. Unless you knew, you would never be able to tell. 
Her dad was a really nice guy, too, and I felt bad for him. There were rumors about how kids would print her pictures from the internet and slip them under his office door, not. And I found a single photo of a teacher. I said, whoa, nice. Never looked at it again, nor told anyone about it. I didn't want her to lose her job. She's a good teacher. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click the link in the description to join our community. You can check out this video on your screen in the meantime, and I will see you in the next one.